Welcome to Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday, brought to you by Big Beard Battery. Visit BigBeardBattery.com. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button, that way you don't miss anything. Hit the subscribe button now. Thank you. Hey, Todd here, I'm gonna go ahead and answer your questions about how many batteries do I need? So let's go ahead and set the situation. Summer is coming, you're ready to take that weekend trip in your RV, and you begin to wonder, how many batteries do I need? Hmm. You see, last year you went out, you tried your weekend trip, you had your battery out there, and you didn't make it the weekend. How do I figure this stuff out? Why didn't the battery last long enough? And honestly, how many batteries do I need? Because there's a weight consideration, uh, cost factors, and all these things, so how much do I need? So what we're gonna do on this tech tip is just go over just a little bit on how to figure out that information. Now, your battery is nothing more than stored energy. We know that we have a 12-volt battery, the stored energy, the pressure being pushed, 12 volts. What we're looking for on that battery is how much stored amperage we have. It's known as amp hours, and typically in the RV space, the battery that they give us is 100 amp hours. You crack open your book to your lead-acid battery, and you'll find out that even though there's 100 amp hours in there, well, you can only use 50 because Actually, draining the battery more than 50% does damage to the battery and overstresses all your 12-volt motors. So just understand, right off the bat, 50% is what you can use, or about 50 amp hours. That is our supply. Now let's look at our demand. If all you do on the weekends is run your lights, your LED lights, and maybe your fart fans, well, there's a consumption, so many amps per hour that are being drawn. If we take our typical RV, say 20 foot to 40 foot, and we turned on all the LED lights, you're only gonna draw about one to two amps. Well, that's one to two amps per hour. Again, your supply is only 50 amp hours, and your lights are drawing one to two amp hours, so you can kind of figure out, well, if I take all my lights, turn them on. Let's just say half of them, one amp per hour. Well, that means roughly I can get about 50 hours. I can get about two days just on the lights. If I wanted to run some other things, say like my exhaust fan, if I wanted to go into and get some airflow and turn on the exhaust fan, well, those draw about two or three amps per hour, depending on the size. So what you have to do is factor in everything that you're turning in. Guys, typically this is the way it's gonna work. You'll have your lights, you'll have your fans, and then you'll have your refrigerator. And it doesn't matter which one you have other than say a residential, a truly residential refrigerator doesn't use 12 volts. But an absorption style refrigerator and a 12 volt refrigerator obviously use 12 volts. Well, let's look at those numbers real quick because you're always gonna draw from the 12 volts on those refrigerators. Now, absorption style refrigerator draws roughly about one amp per hour, about two, uh, two, three watts, so about 20, 24 watts, I'm sorry, uh, 24 watts, that's about one amp per hour. If you have a 12 volt refrigerator, you're drawing anywhere from four to eight amps per hour. Now again, if your limited supply is only 50 amps and you're drawing anywhere from four to eight, let's say if you have a 12 volt refrigerator, then you understand you're not making it the weekend with that one battery. So from there you can figure out how long am I wanting to be off grid or whatever there may be just to get through the weekend. And that's where we'll start with the basis and that is just simply how you factor in how much you have. Now, obviously, what if you have one battery, you buy a second battery. Now, of course, like kind, same year, same age, everything else. If you, if you upgrade it to two batteries, well, you get your 100 amp hours if you have lead acid, okay? Now, the thing is, all of our stuff, we're starting to go more and more 12 volts. A lot of you begin to see that we have 12 volt TVs. 12 volt refrigerators are making their way, and eventually we'll have 12 volt air conditioners, which means we'll need, need for a bigger supply. So one of the things you want to think about is, is maybe before you buy that second lead acid battery, go ahead and maybe consider switching over to lithium. Guys, there's a lot of considerations with lithium, switching over to lithium, and I've done several videos on that topic right there, so you can find out, yes, I need to change my charger, uh, quite possibly, or see if I can go ahead and have the charger identify uh, lithium batteries. Here's the deal, okay? If you have one battery that hasn't got you what you wanted, you can get a second one and see if that'll get you. If that doesn't get you all the way through, then the third one. I mean, that's kind of a trial and error basis. But if you know some numbers, just some basic numbers, you don't have to do all of them, but 
think about what you want to run off-grid, maybe going down the road, wherever there may be. Lights, fans, refrigerator, okay? Figure out what that total consumption is, and then you know your supply. If it's 50 amp hours, then that's all you're going to use, which is typically, guys, one day. We're going to get one day out of that battery on those three um, components right there, lights, fans, and refrigerator. If you want to try and make it the weekend, honestly, you need about three. Three of the lead-acid batteries. Or switch over to lithium, and typically just one would get you the weekend. Now, let's go ahead and cover some of you, kind of like me, that want to run everything, right? So you want everything on-grid, off-grid, it doesn't matter. If there's a switch, turn it on. Well, that's how we are. Now, if you're looking at uh, maybe going that route, and this is where you're putting in an inverter, guys, I got to tell you, you have to go lithium. Here's the difference between, say, lead acid and lithium. Now, lithium will give you twice as much. You can use nearly 100% of the total amount in that battery and you can do it far faster. Now, with lead acid batteries, you know, they are what we call deep cycle, they're joggers. They, they can only handle so much um, uh, discharge at once. Whereas with a lithium battery, oh my goodness, I mean, you can discharge four, five, six times faster than a lead acid battery. And whenever you're using, a say, an inverter, now you wanna run your AC or two ACs. Well, heck, let's just go for that. If you wanna run all three ACs, hey, yes, it can be done. But now we're looking at switching over to lithium, and this is where lithium gets you where you want to go. Taking that RV wherever you want for however long, just a mixture of batteries for that power during the night, and then maybe solar panels during the day. That's how we typically do that. How many batteries there? Well, whenever we decided to build our system for our RV, I did the math and everything else, and I came up, and I put in eight 300 amp hour batteries. And why did I do that? Okay, well, in building my system, what I was looking at was is at night, wherever I'm going to be on BLM land or even in a, a RV park or something like that, where there's quiet hours. I knew that once I go quiet hours, I have no help. Can't run the generator, and of course, solar panels don't work. I have a need to run an air conditioner uh, while I sleep. So, in order to find out how many batteries I need, I looked at my air conditioner. I know it draws roughly about between 15 and 20 amps, depending on how hot it is. So when looking at you know my need for having an air conditioner, guys, I mean, now air conditioners, their amp draw can totally change. As it cools off, there's less of an amp draw. As it heats up, there's a greater amp draw, simply because we're compressing uh, gas, and gases actually create more pressure. All right, that's a whole nother topic. But I went ahead and factor in at 20 amps. That's what my air conditioner breaker is uh, uh, set at. So when I did my math, 20 amps, or 200 amps at 12 volts. So here's what I did. I said I needed that much power. So at 300 amp hour batteries, it took me eight batteries to run an air conditioner for about 11 to 14 hours continuous. And that's how I set mine. So eight 300 amp hour batteries. The problem was there wasn't many out there that can perform that much. So this is where I went down the trail of developing my own, you know, and after three years of development, putting everything out there, whatever was out there, trying to put it together, find out, well, I don't like this part, this is subperforming, uh, nailing all that down, now we're excited that I put in my own batteries, and sure enough, all three ACs at one time, right, for about uh, three, four hours, or one air conditioner, uh, plus some other stuff, you know, for 11 to 14 hours. So it all depends. Now, am I saying this is for everyone? No, not at all. But everyone does have a need for those batteries. Everyone needs to know how batteries work. Batteries are absolutely important when it comes to the RV space. So this is why we go over this information for you. And it's all free. There's your deck tip. Is he closing the door? I don't know. Hey, everybody, let's get started. Now he's knocking, making loud noises. I do see the bouncy light. <laughs> on, off. Wait, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. So in your ventures of, I don't even know where I'm going with this. Okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> well, all right. Um, I'm gonna turn the air conditioner off again. Right. Uh, Hold on, I'm sweating. <laughs> It's so hot oh. this summer. So I just went on the, um, so. Yeah, <laughs>